Hey brothers and sisters, I wanted to get on here and tell you guys about something awesome that the Lord did this past week. One morning I was just crying out to the Lord and I was just disturbed about all of the things that I was hearing about AI and its capabilities and what it's being used for and stories of how it's supposedly becoming sentient and um, taken over by demonic entities and that it's able to speak and basically respond to prompts and questions. But a lot of the responses sometimes the AI will give people are nefarious and evil. And even some of the AI that people have programmed, they have had evil intentions in the way that they program this AI. Some of you have heard about Google recently and what happened with that. I won't get into that in this video. But anyways, I was just calling out to the Lord and I was disturbed by the progression of this agenda and this AI and how it's taking over. And some are even making the connection of AI being worshipped and this technology actually being godlike and being like a god and taking over humanity and even outsmarting humanity. My students have been learning Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 5 through 7 and the Lord had been putting that on my heart for weeks and I've memorized it along with my students and I was just crying out to God saying okay Lord I know you say that these idols they they can't speak they can't talk they have to be moved they have to be carried that they're just lifeless idols but now we have idols that actually can speak and these things this AI technology really reminds me of an image of the beast in the book of Revelation and being able to speak and cause all that do not worship it to be killed. And so these articles that are coming out about the worship of AI and it requiring people to bow down to it and worship, I was just disturbed. And I was calling out to the Lord and I was like, Lord, please just encourage my heart because your word says that these idols, these false gods, they can't speak, they can't move. But now there's these false gods that are being given this body that can speak in a sense and that can move. And I know many of you have seen the robots that are programmed with artificial intelligence and can carry on a conversation and even cook a meal, clean a kitchen and the robot dogs and so on and so on. And all these robots that can be trained by the military to go in and wipe people out. And I can't imagine how the world is responding to this. If I didn't have Christ, I would be absolutely terrified at the thought of these things and what we're seeing even now and what the future holds. But we know that the Lord has declared the end from the beginning and we know how it ends. And we know that Christ is victorious and that he will demolish all of this evil with the breath of his mouth at his second coming. And so I look forward to that. But in the meantime, I was just calling out to him for encouragement and just a moment of doubt and a moment of fear of just crying out, Lord, help me in your word to be comforted when we see these things, these idols, these false God-like creations that people are using and probably have nefarious plans for in the future. And then I went to work and didn't think much of it. So it was this past Tuesday and every Tuesday we have a staff meeting and our grammar school principal will lead this meeting and usually she goes through this book about the different virtues and it how it relates to the classroom and teaching but 
this morning she did something she's never done before this year. And she asked us to bring our Bibles and asked us to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 2 and 3. And I still wasn't thinking anything of this. So she goes on to read about the King Og. And she starts talking about how he was the last of the giants. He was the last giant remaining, descending from the Nephilim. And she went on to talk about his height and how he was double the size of Shaquille O'Neal or possibly even triple the size of him. Scholars vary on his actual height. We know that the Bible gives the length of his bed, but some scholars believe he was just as tall as the bed, and then there's other scholars that believe he would have been a little bit shorter. But regardless, he was at least double the size of Shaquille O'Neal, and he was a giant. He was huge, and he was the king of Bashan, and he was the enemy of Israel, and here Israel is about to enter into the promised land, and the Lord is telling them to not be afraid. So she calls on us to go through and read verse by verse around the room, and each person reads a verse. And so we go around the room and we're reading through, and then it comes to me. And the verse that I read, I started tearing up because it sounded just like the Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 5 through 7. But here, instead of it talking about a lifeless idol that cannot speak, that must be carried, here it's talking about a giant, a descendant from the Nephilim, which we know are basically the children of fallen angels, demons, fallen angels came to this earth and took unto themselves women, human women, and they gave birth to this race, the Nephilim. So basically it's a demonic race and like a hybrid race. They were not humans and they had demonic, I guess, DNA. And they were giants. They were huge. They were larger and more powerful than those made in the image of God. And they were terrifying. And they could speak and they could move. So uh, you probably see where I'm going with this. But anyways, I wanted to read these two scriptures. The first one's Jeremiah 10, 5 through 7. It says, they are upright like a palm tree and they cannot speak. They must be carried, for they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. Inasmuch as there is none like you, O Lord, you are great, and your name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? For this is your rightful due. For among all the wise men of the nations and all its kingdoms, there is none like you. So that was the scripture that my students memorized, and I'll include a clip of them saying it as well. And that's the scripture the Lord has been putting on my heart, but when I came across some of these things about AI, I just became fearful, and I was like, Lord, I, I can't use that scripture to fight back when these fears and doubts come, because it's referring to lifeless idols that can't speak and this AI I believe in a lot of ways is demonic sure it can be used for good I know believers use it for good in their ministries online but also it can be used in a very demonic evil way and just asking the Lord to give me scripture and literally an hour after I pray that he answers my prayer so we're reading around the room. It comes to me and then I read this. So when it came to me, I read verse 22 of Deuteronomy chapter three, and it says, do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. And the context of these chapters is Moses recounting how the Lord had defeated their enemies as they approached the promised land and all that the Lord had done 
But this verse was so powerful because it literally starts the same way as the verse in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 5 through 7, where it says, do not be afraid of them. But here, instead of it referring to lifeless idols, it's referring to these enemies that are led by this giant and a very strong enemy, might I add. So it was a clear answer to prayer and gave me so much confidence that the Lord will fight for us and we have no need to fear because we fear the one who can cast body and soul in hell, the one who is above all things. And when we realize just who our God is, these giants, whatever they may be, literal giants or artificial intelligence, it is nothing against our Lord, our God, who is ruler over all of creation and over any spiritual entity. Everything on earth and in heaven is subject to him. How fearful and dreadful is the Lord for his enemies. I would not want to be an enemy of the Lord, but thanks be to God that he sent his only begotten son to take on flesh and live our human experience and go through trials and temptations and yet remain perfect and holy lived a perfect life in our place because we cannot do it. We cannot live a perfect life. And Jesus came and lived that perfect life and became our sacrifice. He took our place. We deserve the punishment of sin and death. We deserve to be the enemies of God. And we were once enemies of God. But because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can be reconciled to God. And not only that, we can be called children of God. This is our Father who fights for us, not just some arbitrary God in the heavens out there somewhere that has no personal connection to us. This is a loving Heavenly Father who is omniscient, omnipresent, who hears our cry, who hears our prayers, because we have Jesus Christ interceding for us. The veil that separated us from God is torn, and we can boldly enter into the throne room of grace and call out to him in our time of need and know that he hears us and we have no reason to be afraid because he is our father and he fights for us and i just want to leave with this in matthew 21 jesus answered them and said, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Just like the Lord answered this prayer beautifully, we have a promise that whatever we ask according to his will, we will receive. And we should pray expecting that he will answer our prayers and that he does indeed hear us. I hope this blesses and encourages you today. Do not fear what we see around us, the surrounding armies and enemies at this Red Sea moment. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. He is the author of all things and he will make a way where there seems to be no way. Maranatha.